பார்த்திபன் கனவு இங்கிலீஷ் டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் பை ஆனந்த் கண்ணன் நரேட்டட் பை சுஜாதா ஆனந்த் புக் டூ சாப்டர் செவன்டீன் குந்தவீஸ் வாவ் The emperor and Kundubi were seated on the terrace of the Kanchi palace. It was early part of a night of waning moon. Stars shone brightly. The lighthouse of the Mamalapuram harbor was shining at a distance, competing with the stars. There were various sounds from the Shiva and Vishnu temples of Kanchipuram. The sounds of drums, stringed instruments, and chants of the devotees. The pleasant breeze carried the fragrance of champak, paneer, and parijadam flowers the emperor asked my child why do you look sullen are you unwell i am in fine physical shape father but my mind is the problem i am not in a good mood the mind is a hard thing to master learned people compare it to a mad elephant they say you should use your brain as a weapon to control it Father, yes, dear. How did you know I went to visit the Jain monks? If I don't know what my daughter is up to, how can I keep tabs on this large kingdom? Father, I'm going to convert to either Jainism or Buddhism. Why do you say that, my dear? What do you have against Shaivism and Vaishnavism? I am vexed with life. I wish I was not born. Is it that bad? You went to visit Appar, the saint. Did he not tell you how magnificent life as a human is? He says it is worth being born just to witness the celestial dance of Father, please stop. He has gone crazy with devotion. He goes on about the bliss of watching the celestial dance. I don't want to hear about the dance of the one who created this crazy world. The emperor laughed. Kundavi turned her face away. The emperor asked, Do you know why I laughed? I was wondering if you have gone crazy as well. No, my child, I am well. The reason I laughed is that I said exactly the same things once upon a time. I dislike the world too. Do you know why? Because I was born as your daughter? No, my child, your arrival made me love life again. A while before your birth, I hated everything and that was because I was upset with my father. Kundavi smiled despite herself. The emperor continued, I am guessing you are in the same boat now. Are you not upset with me now? Kundavi wiped her tears. Looking at the floor, she said, I don't have any reason to be angry at you, but... I am upset at the injustice that happened under your rule. Is that all, Kundavi? If I can render injustice, I have the power to correct it as well. If I come to know I have made a mistake, I will make amends. Really, Father, if it is proven that the Choya prince was not responsible for his actions, will you reverse the sentence? Certainly, dear. Kundavi resolved in her mind, that she would drag that phony sage by his beard into her father's court. The emperor asked, Kundavi, why are you lost in thoughts? In two days, I am leaving to Ureyur. Do you want to come along? Yes, father. I have a mission there as well. I hope you will not stop me. Mission? Is it a secret? Or can you tell me? Not a secret. I want to see Queen Arulmui. Will she want to see you? Why wouldn't she want to see me? Your father deported her son. Don't you think she will be upset with you? Why should she be upset at me? Was I the one who encouraged her son to commit treason? The emperor heard this and told himself that it was his mistake to expect rational arguments from a woman. End of chapter 17